All substances are made of something, but unfortunately, science still cannot answer the simple question of what matter is actually made of, how it is organized, and what is the primary cause of this. This is the quantum structure of any material body of ours, and today let's talk about what is already known to science about the structure of matter, about what is the minimal building block for the construction of our matter. And based on this knowledge, we will be able to make some conclusions about the properties of materials, predict material properties and model materials. Overall, this topic is very interesting and useful. From the very first physics lessons in school, we already know that all bodies consist of molecules. In general, this is logical. To understand how a body is structured, to understand how it functions, and what can be done with it, one needs to understand the construction of that body. I think this question doesn't arise either. Thus, the question arises about the existence of the atom. And here too, there is no reason to doubt, because atoms have been discovered, atoms have even been photographed using an electron microscope, and it has been determined that each atom possesses certain properties. It is precisely the properties of atoms that allow us to combine into structures of different types, endow a molecule with certain properties and characteristics, create a specific configuration in space, and in general, all of this is based on the knowledge of atoms. But atoms, what are atoms? They are the smallest unit that makes up a molecule, which at one point was considered indivisible, but was predicted as far back as ancient Greece. However, unfortunately, in the process of studying this, uncertainty was introduced. The thing is, when Rutherford's planetary model of the atom appeared, it became quite clear that the atom itself is not the smallest particle. Therefore, it is not correct to say that the atom alone completely determines the properties of materials. Although, it, it is correct to say that the atom determines many properties, the atom forms molecules of a certain type and determines the configuration of these molecules, but it is not correct to say that the atom is the reason for the existence of matter. And the emergence of this knowledge allowed for a lot to be explained about the material, and everything would be fine if it weren't necessary to search for even smaller building blocks. And we took protons, neutrons and electrons. We took electrons, examined them, but everything turned out to be quite simple with electrons. Although the very existence of the electron itself is quite a controversial issue, the question is, and many now believe, that the electron is merely a wave function, meaning that as a particle, the electron does not exist. However, in principle, the general solution and consensus suggested that the electron is a lepton. Leptons are called particles that cannot be divided. Although the existence of the electron as a particle is questioned, the fact that it leaves a trace of light when passing through a bubble chamber suggests that at the very least something is passing through. Well, and here of course the debate arises that it could also be a wave passing through, and thus it can affect the medium present in the bubble chamber. But a particle could also be passing through. The situation is much worse with protons and neutrons. Let's start with the proton. The joy of the proton being the smallest particle was short-lived. And as a result of research, the proton was successfully split. So how was it split? Well, basically, just like other particles are split nowadays, it was accelerated in a collider and the constituent parts of this proton were isolated. The particles obtained from the decay of the proton were called hadrons. And this brings to mind the Hadron Collider, which has been widely discussed recently. Essentially, the goal of the Hadron Collider was to break particles into even smaller particles. So when the proton was spun in the collider, it turned out that it decays into hadrons. And that's when the real panic began. The whole point was that we were searching for the smallest building block that makes up matter. We were looking for the particle that endows matter with the ability to exist. But instead, we found just crowds of billions of particles. And from the moment hadrons began to be studied, not a day has passed without new hadrons being discovered. There were so many of them that after several years of study, we had to somehow try to group them. This posed significant problems and challenges because it was impossible to find a common feature for grouping. Every day, new particles appeared and it was unclear where to categorize them. Therefore, in general, all of this was classified into one group called hadrons, and for a moment it was thought that this could be the end of it. But the worst happened in 1960. It was predicted that any hadron could be broken down into constituent quarks, just like atoms for molecules. And molecules for substances would be the building material for constructing the next link, but as a fact, molecules as a whole. However, it was established that quarks exist for a very short time and are not a stable modification. There was also a huge number of quarks, and if you look at their names, you could go crazy. Moreover, even the physicists themselves started joking about it. And so, some groups of quarks were named after ice cream flavors. And then something terrible happened. It was suggested that quarks also consist of other particles. The particles were called prions. But if quarks have already been discovered, if they have been detected, they have been detected. The very Higgs boson, which you've probably heard of, is quite a complex thing, which perhaps deserves a separate discussion. But for now, let's just skim the surface. 
And so, those very quarks also seem to consist of particles, and the particles that make up quarks are commonly referred to as prions. However, the prion is still a hypothetical particle, or a particle that in principle has not yet been discovered. But you know, my personal opinion is that, of course, another particle will be discovered from which quarks are composed. And, by the way, a fair question arises. What will be at the very foundation? Well, this question is fundamental for all of physics, for all of science, because if we get to the essence, we might understand what matter is. Matter around us is something. We can touch it, we can somehow apply it somewhere, we can make a machine out of it. But unfortunately, we cannot understand what matter is at a deep level. And science cannot help us here yet either, because scientists shrug and say that there will always be a particle that is smaller. And so, for a long time, we have been searching for this indivisible particle, working on it, but so far all particles keep dividing and dividing. Attempts of modern scientists, understanding the world is similar to accelerating a modern car, crashing it into a wall, and then, from the remnants of that car, trying to somehow formulate what properties it had and what was needed for what. In general, why am I smiling? Because the method of working with materials, the method of working with substances, and the attempt to determine the indivisible is built on the same principle. We accelerate a particle using a collider, it breaks apart, and from the fragments we try to see what it actually was. But one way or another, I believe that the method of study is fundamentally chosen correctly because, even if we take the example of a car when we disassemble a car, we can assume, at least assume, that each part of its construction was intended for a specific purpose. And then it comes to mind. Another example, if the world had no structure, it would be similar to a hurricane passing through a junkyard and resulting in a fighter jet. High tech. Of course, there is some logic in the construction of material, but in my personal opinion, without knowing the smallest particle, it is very difficult to predict this logic. Modern science, although it does not know how all this will end and does not fully understand what matter is made of, there is already an opinion that this indivisible part will not be found, and that the smallest particle of matter is information. And by the way, while discussing all these smallest particles, we completely forgot about neutrons, which along with protons are part of the atomic nucleus. Neutrons, like protons, belong to the group of nucleons and, according to modern science, also consist of quarks. Well, and everything we mentioned earlier about quarks applies to neutrons as well. So, we have examined the modern scientific understanding of what everything is made of and how matter is structured. In the process, we discovered that science does not fully understand how this matter is structured. Well, uh, at least we studied the smallest particles that exist at all. Well, thank you for watching, I'm glad you found the time for this and that it was interesting to you. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask them in the comments and share the video. If you're interested in the topic of hypothetical particles, I was also thinking of making a video on that. If it's something you like, write about it in the comments. Thank you all for your attention, see you next time.